Hello lovely people. Today I will show you how to use phase to better align your subwoofer with the front. Before we jump into the laptop, I just very quickly going to explain what we have here. I have a laptop. I have a Focusrite Scarlett audio interface that goes uh, output with the loopback and it goes into the Helix DSP. And then I have a microphone that is sitting here, right where I'm supposed to be sitting, right in the middle of my head. And basically I'm doing time alignment with home impulse. So it's pretty basic setup where you have to measure time alignment, loopback and audio interface. Now let's jump into the laptop and I'm gonna show you everything what I mean. So this is my laptop and on the laptop I have a few programs open. So I have uh, obviously the Helix DSP software that I'm gonna be controlling everything. Then I have REW just to show you the actual RTA measurements from what I have and Home Impulse. So this is the program that I'm doing my uh, time alignment with. Now, before we start, these, uh, basically, I had problems time aligning uh, the rear subwoofer with the front subwoofer. But in your case, it could be subwoofer that you have with the mid base that you have. You might not have this problem. But I'm going to show you the problem that I have and how to solve it. So these are my targets. I crossed the front subwoofer and rear subwoofer at about 40, 42 hertz. And this, these are the actual responses smooth to one third. So this is the front subwoofer and this is the rear. As you can see, they follow the targets almost perfect and I'm very happy how it is. Now the problem that I'm arriving is, okay, this is the subwoofer first is the front subwoofer that I have and subwoofer two is the IB subwoofer in the back. Now, let me show you the problem. Uh, with this one, I'm going to measure, uh, everything is muted apart from the rear subwoofer. Now, I'm going to measure the impulse response of the rear subwoofer. It's a very quick measurement, and I have this. Now, I did set up because the rear subwoofer is at the very back of the car, so I know that is the furthest uh, speaker in my system. I'm going to zoom in onto the phase graph as well a little bit, uh, if I can, just to see it a bit better. There we go. So we see that like the phase goes very nice, everything is fine, and here you have a problem at about 57, close to 60 hertz, just because if I remove this smoothing, all of it, here, uh, this. So you see this wiggle, let me remove the front subwoofer. Like uh, the frequency response is the same as phase. So phase follows the frequency response. All of these wiggles, actually I can hear it, have it here as well. You see this dip corresponds to the phase shift in here. Well, it doesn't, this doesn't really matter for us. So what kind of problem I have? If I have this, I measure the phase uh, and the impulse response of the rear subwoofer. Now I'm going to measure the front subwoofer. So I mute the rear, unmute the front, and let's measure the front. Okay, the measurement is quick, and I have this. So now I, I see from this graph that the phase is almost aligned, but they're not in time. They're way off by like five point something milliseconds. So this is the case that in my car, um, again, I, I'm not sure why. It might be because of this. So when you set your crossovers, yeah, and if you have a very narrow band, I have exactly the same for my uh, mid base as well. I have a very narrow band. When you have a very narrow band, the low pass affects the high pass and the high pass affects the low pass. So basically the crossovers kind of affect each other and give you a phase shift that wouldn't be there if you would have a very wide band. So like if you have mid ranges, for example, if I have one crossover, the one crossover doesn't affect the other crossover. But when you have crossovers very close to each other, they affect each other and they shift the phase. Now, if you can see this problem is that they are in the crossover region because the crossover region for me is, I want to say like 
30 to 60, something like that. So between here, between 30 and all the way up to 60, they are in phase, but they are out of time. Now, what happens if I put the front subwoofer in time with the rear? So I need to add delay. I'm going to add well, 5.7. Let's say 5.7 for the front subwoofer. This is my front. I'm going to add because the front subwoofer, remember, it's extremely close to me. It's literally just next to my uh, next to me. And the rear subwoofer is all the way back. So it needs a lot of delay. So let's add 5.7 milliseconds. Let's measure again the front. And now what I have, I have them both in time, but not in phase. So this is the issue that I have them in time playing perfectly. Basically, when one node hits the on the other subwoofer node hits as well at the same time. However, they're not in phase. That means they don't sum up and they're out of phase quite a lot. And basically, when they're out of phase, they don't sum. I don't have the best summing possible. Now, what can we do is like a mental experiment. What can we do to change the phase without changing the time? What we can do is use an all pass filter. So all pass filters, we know that they're somewhere here, like hidden in the EQ tab. You can choose an all pass. However, in Helix, you have this, the polarity phase and time. So you can adjust the time. You can flip the polarity, which is going to adjust what it does. It just flips the response. Like, let me just very quickly show you uh, invert. Bam, it basically just inverts this. And even if I flip the phase, you can see they're still not in phase. They are in time, but not in phase. So this 180 degrees out of phase. And there's another thing, there's another slider, which is this one, the phase slider. So I'm not gonna change the rear one, the front one. The front subwoof is fine. I think the rear one is the problem. So with the rear one, if I choose this subwoofer two, I can ch change this phase slider from zero all the way up to like 360 almost. So let's see what happens if I change this slider. Let's choose randomly like something like this, 200 hertz. And let's remeasure the rear subwoofer. Now I'm going to mute this one and I'm going to measure on this one. So from this, you can see that with this added 200 degrees of phase, what I have, I have the same time zero. Obviously, the impulse response is different, but the phase is different. So it shifts the actual phase. Now, if I compare this new measurement with the front subwoofer, we still have time zero the same, but the phase is much, much closer. So what happens if I take... 140 degrees so this is a magic number that i came up to let's remeasure and now i have this let's do a little bit less 120 and now remember my crossover region is between like 30 and 55 because here it drops off so 30 to 55 30 to 55 i have the phase matching perfect especially if i add some smoothing so this is one third smoothing to the phase response as well you can do the same in uh this one and i have this so let's add smoothing on this one and this so basically with this phase graph with a phase slider in rew which is this, in uh, helix dsp which is this one i came from this which were in time and not in phase to this which they are in time and in phase so this is a little trick that i can like found out and i do remember that adam did mention this something that you might need sometimes an all pass filter to match 
uh, especially like the low frequencies. And why do I have this phase shift? I'm not sure. It could be because of the, as I mentioned, the crossovers. It could be because I'm using very, very different amplifiers. And one of the amplifiers can introduce like a phase shift. But just to summarize, if you have if you're doing your time alignment and you see something like this, when you are in time, but not in phase, use the phase slider in Helix and get this. Now, if I do measure both of them together, so both subwoofers enabled, let's measure. There we go. And I have one continuous phase with no problems and no issues. So basically they sum up very, very nice. So this was like, I don't I want to say tutorial, but kind of a, a explanation how to use the phase slider in Helix DSP. So Helix is very, very cool thing. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for watching guys. And I will see you in the next one.